If you kneel with me, we'll begin with the silent prayer. I turn the quaombi. Amen. So we've been tra tracing the fight for gay marriage along our reform line. Tumekuwa tukijaribu kuangalia historia ya kupigania haki ya ndoa jinsia moja. Starting when it first became a, a mainstream popular fight in 1989. And I've said before that this was not immediately a popular fight. Even among the gay community. So, I gave one example of that. The civil rights organization that is meant to represent LGBT people. When three couples sued the state of began to sue the state of Hawaii in 1991. Lambda refused to assist or represent them. So that's how much the gay community itself has changed since pre-1989 to 2015. It's been a radical transformation. And even, so in 1991, it was white male heterosexual who took up their case and fought for them. And say that to illustrate how much has changed in the last 32 years. Even when we come to 2010, Gay marriage is an issue in the United Kingdom. In the UK in 1989, a charity was set up. Called the Stonewall Charity. And by today, they are the largest LGBT lobbying group in Europe. And they are And the head of Stonewall Charity of the Stonewall Charity goes public. Okay, Shirika Hili Nanda Kua Marufu. And he says we have not given a position on gay marriage and we won't now. Natsama Kwamba Atuja Piana Sumwe to Kusundo Ajisamoja na Tuta Piana. History is complicated. 
historia ni changamano. There's never just one neat storyline. Hakuna hadithi fulani. Bad guys. They ended up, the Stonewall charity ended up changing their tune because of the amount of angry responses to, to that statement. But this is how much has changed since 1989. We traced it through 89, 91, 96, 21, 2001. 2004, 2009, 2012. And as we would expect, comes to a crisis point. In 2014 is the midpoint. When hysteria, yeah, umaruf san. The turn, turning point year in its own right. Sabu hii huni mwaka wa mabadiliko makubwa. But it also a midpoint between two major Supreme Court decisions. Na kumba ni katikati. Uh, the dismantled what had been put into place in 1996. A lesbian couple and a gay couple. And From 2015 forward, the fight has been largely won on the side of gay marriage. But I'll just share the photo with you. But I wanted to share before, but I couldn't. I, my fault. But this is the wedding of Jim Obergefell and John Arthur. Ahinia Rusi, Wanandoa Hawa, Kabla. Shortly before John Arthur passed away. And their state's failure to recognize their marriage. By Jimbo, Lily, Mokiwa, who was a catalyst in his involvement in that 2015 Supreme Court decision. So that is the history of homosexual and lesbian rights from 1989 to 2015. And without going into details, I hope we can understand why the conservative right has become so vitriolic since then. And this is not the only thing that has bruised them, but it is a major one. I want us to go back into ancient history. We understand now our immediate history. But we need to put it into context. 
How significant is it? Uh, we won't we won't really see the significance unless we go back and see what has existed before now this is the part where i get nervous Just going to put in a little more detail onto the top line. And then we'll erase the bottom. Avalon. Protestant Reformation, 1881. We're not going to go um, into this history, but I'll leave it there as reference. When we wanted to understand Adventism, where did we look? Protestantism. You have to understand the context. What is being imbibed? So most of the time period from May 2020 to now, as I've said a couple of times now, we're going back and looking at the history of Protestantism. I don't want to go to Protestantism. I want to go to Assyria, Egypt, Babylon, Greece, and Rome. I'll erase them for now. Now this is where I get nervous. Um, because I know that other people have looked into history. Whether it's ancient pagan nations or indigenous populations. And individuals have come to, I'm sure, have come to their own thoughts and conclusions. And my concern is that I could very easily in this series just end up disagreeing with absolutely everyone. I'm hoping that what I that what I present uh, makes logical sense. I do fear that media literacy is still an issue this movement can struggle with. And when you go back and look at history, it's not just the religious right that can manipulate history to suit themselves. The left can do that as well. So I'm going to go particularly through three pagan nations. Egypt, Greece, and Rome. We're not going to go through them in that order. 
kupitia mataifa hayo matatu going to start with Greece Tanzania wa Yunani Sad by far the most to say about Greece And perhaps the the reasons why for that might um, might make sense to you already. They're known for same-sex relationships. So as, as, as I said before, I hope not, but I fear that I may end up disagreeing with everyone. Ana hofu kwamba anaweza kuja katika hitimisho la kutoelewana na mtu. Because when we look at history first of all we need to find I would suggest the best sources. Kwamba tutapangalia katika historia kitu ya kwanza ni kwamba wafuo upate sehemu nzuri. But also we can't just believe what suits us na kwamba tuweze tu amini kila mambo tunatufaidi sisi. If we don't like it, we don't like it. Kama atupendi, atuipendi. But facts remain. Lakini ah uh, kweli una So there's another a number of difficulties in going into this history and I want to list them all to begin with. Na shida mingi za kwenda katika historia hizi na nataka nizieleze sasa hizi. Things that are going to obstruct us as we look through history. The first one is that what we'll be covering is a new subject. Because we're going to be discussing sex. And many people in the movement are still uncomfortable with us discussing sex. Which I don't really understand why. Every Adventist believes that God has things to say on every facet of your life. Uh, kina Adventista anaamini kwamba Mungu ana uwezo wa kuzungumzia chochote katika kinacho. The, the one decision that can have the most wide range of consequences you think he has nothing to say. Alafu unafikiria kwamba katika swala hili la ngono unafikiria kwamba Mungu hawezi kuwa na kile kitu chochote cha kusema? Or if he does you prefer it written so you can go and read it somewhere private. Kama kama Mungu atakuja mambo kufungona ana kusudia kwamba aende katika sehemu fulani ifichu tome. So everyone's heard Elva Paminda series on relationships. Ah kila mtu anakusudia kwamba amesikiza mafunzo ya Elva Paminda ya mambo kufungona. And you know that he has discussed this topic. Anajua kwamba amezungumzia swala hili. Many aspects of it. Sehemu mbalimbali ya mfunzo. Now it's my turn. <laughs> Sasa ni wakati. So that's a disclaimer to begin with. Hivi basi ni muhimu kuelewa hayo kabla tuanze. We'll be discussing relationships but particularly sex. Tutakuwa tunazungumzia mahusiano na sua swala la ngono. And as you might imagine historical societies never wanted to talk about sex. Na jinsi ambavyo unaweza kufikiria ni kwamba zile jamii za kitambo hazikutaka kuzungumzia swala la ngono. So historical societies would meet and talk about ancient Greek Greece but they would just pretend this was not part of it. Basi jamii za kitambo zitasema kwamba hazikuzungumzia sana mambo ya ngono haswa kwa Yunani. And that attitude did not change until the late 1970s. Na mfumo huo wa kufikiria haukubadilika hadi mwaka mwaka ya 1970. So it's not I'm not saying it's a new subject for us this is a new subject externally. Sema kwamba swala hili ni geni sana. 
only been really discussed in historical societies since about 1978. When a book was published called Greek Homosexuality, and it opened up that discussion in mainstream societies. So by the time you get to the 1980s, they're finally starting to address this topic. But as you might imagine, everyone comes to that topic hoping to see what they want to see. Making arguments that fit their present day desires for what they want to see in present day society. And So that's the difficulty with it being a new subject and a sensitive subject. And one of the reasons I've not shared many articles on the broadcast about this subject is that it is almost entirely impossible, almost impossible, to find a source that isn't touched by bias. The issue is foreign language. And when we try and understand an ancient civilization like Greece, we're dealing with an ancient language. And then it all gets into Latin. So when you go back to their language, they had no word that meant that that was a replacement for our modern word homosexual. They had no equivalent. So when you go to a liberal article, and they're going to quote Plato, and he's going to say that homosexual relationships are positive. You know that's not what he's saying in a modern day context. So, first of all, he is not using the modern term for homosexual. And second, he could not be using their equivalent because they had none. So there's the issue with translation. The third issue is one I've already touched on, bias. Bias when they do that, they don't quote Plato towards the end of his life. When towards the end, he said that the same-sex relationships that they did have were essentially an abomination. Because he changed his positions over the course of his life. So bias becomes an issue. 
Tu basi kwelemea, mrengo fulani na kuwa shida. I will quote from one um, online source. Atapota kumiku, kutoka mwenye hapo ya... About the sacred band of thieves. Ya mtandao. It says 3,000 years ago in ancient Greece, being gay or lesbian was not a crime. In fact, in certain situations, the Greeks even encouraged homosexual relationships. That's just wrong. We we can't go into a confusing area of history and make it what we want it. Because that tiny phrase in certain situations frankly, that tiny qualifier is not big enough to fix how much they've twisted the history. And most liberal sources will take their bias to Greek history as well as conservative ones. Wale watu waendelezi watachukua mrengo fulani the fourth issue is male perspective. It's all written from a male perspective. So if you want to know what a woman's experience was, or what a woman thought in ancient Greece and Rome, Generally, you're not going to find anything. And when they see men describe or illustrate a woman's sexual experience, much like male directors of movies today, they don't end up illustrating a true female experience. And they can see this even in those societies when they're illustrating women having sex. They're discussed, carved, illustrated by men. Largely for men. One thing that people have trouble with is that a woman can have pleasure without being penetrated. And they didn't like that fact either. So their sexism shows even in their art. The other issue is contradictions. Any society has a, a variety of experiences and perspectives. Less back then than now, I would suggest. Less back then than now. Because I would suggest even more so back then, you, you belonged to the state. 
Atasema kwamba hata hapa awali ulikuwa But still if you look out today some of the people who will be left the most famous Ata kama leo watu wengi ambao watabaki kuwa maarufu do not represent the lives of normal society. Watu hao ambao watabaki kuwa maarufu katika jamii za kitambo hawata kuonyesha mtazamo. So there's the danger of pulling out one case and thinking that somehow is a representative of general society. Basi kuna shida utakapotoa mtazamo wa mtu fulani mashuhuri kufikia kwamba anahusishwa na jamii yote. We're covering a time period of hundreds even thousands of years. Tajaribu kuelewa historia ya miaka mingi hapo nyuma. When you go from Mesopotamia Assyria to the end of pagan Rome. Unapo toa kutoka Mesopotamia Ashuri na mwisho wa Rome ya Kishenzi. All of them have famous legends or famous people that may look outside of the ordinary. Ha watu hawa wana watu mashuhuri sana watu wa kawaida What we want to see is the positions of their government and general society. Kila ambacho tunataka kuona ni mtazamo wao na mtazamo wa jamii kwa jumla. In the early 1900s In the first decade of the 1900s Two women in Spain got married and then fled. Katika miaka ya awali ya 1990 wanawake wawili walioleka katika nje. They are not representative of general society. Na wakatoroka baadaye. Watu hao hawa 1905 Spain. Watu hao au na wakati hao wawili awaonyeshi ni The conservative faction of the Catholic Church reveres two women to a much higher extent than the liberal. Uh, Lucia and Mary. But what is the experience of normal conservative catholic women compared to a liberal catholic women Lucia na Mary na ni tajiri kwa hiki ambao wanawake wa katoliki wa mrango wa kulia wanapata kutokana na wale wa kulia wa kushoto Just the conservatives worship of female goddesses and prophetesses make them view ordinary women better kwamba wale wa mrango wa kulia wanaona kwamba wabudu ama kuwa maarufu kwa wanawake fulani inafanya wanawake wengine kuwa just like papal rome same with pagan rome agency hiyo hiyo rome ya kipapa na rome ya kishenzi doesn't matter if a society has goddesses ayelishi kwamba jamii that doesn't mean that women in their societies are treated particularly well a uh, baada ya manchi kwamba wanawake katika jamii wata watahusishwa na mambo mazuri. So we have to watch out for seeming contradictions and look to general society as much as we can. Lazima tuangalie kila wakati kwa kwamba katika katika jamii. The last difficulty is the limitations of presenting. Kile ya mwisho kwanza Mm. With this format we can't read a lot. Ilikuwa na ugumu wa kuleta mambo haya. And it's it's similar to how difficult it was to teach parts of Protestantism. Ah, ni vile vile ni kama vile ni ugumu kufunza sehemu fulani za Protestant historia ya Protestant. And I ended up just stating things at fact as fact. Na ali Malizia because this perspective had either been gleaned from many different sources kwa sababu ni mtazamo ambao aliupata kutoka sehemu mbalimbali or from the audio of a 30 hour book ama kutokana na 
audio flani ama kitabu flani refa and this is a more difficult subject than the history of protestantism na isola hili ya mashtaria yetu ndio angalia ni ngumu zaidi kuliko historia ya protestant and once i started to come to what is my position on this subject na anapoanza kuja katika kuwa na mtazamo wake katika swala hili found there was almost no sources that i could agree with even 80% na ilikuwa bayana kwamba hakuna hata sehemu moja ya sehemu ambayo alikuwa anapata ujumbe ah. in fact in my notes there's one source where i have one sentence cuz i couldn't stand anything but one sentence <laughs> kwamba katika sehemu fulani kuna mali ambapo alipata ni sentence moja tu ambayo but i worded the one sentence nicely so i saved it ambayo angekubaliana naye waliweka sentence hii vizuri so akakubaliana naye so i know this is a subject where people have many different positions yobasha anatambua kwamba hii ni kunza masomo ambayo watu wengi wanamtazama tofauti and then when a secular author discusses this and then brings in the bible na mtu wa kidunia anapojadili mambo haya alafu analeta biblia ndani then they make a terrible mess au uh, ndio kwamba hapo wanafanya makosa so, makuu I'll do my best. Basha tajaribu kufanya awezalo kuleta mazuri. Ancient Greece. Ni ya Yunani ya kale. What to begin by quoting Aristotle? Atanza kwa kunukuu Aristotle. I've got three quotes. Ananuku tatu. He says the female is as it were a deformed male. Kama mwanamke ni kama vile mwanaume mwenye ulemavu. Male formed mume akaumbwa female deformed wana mke he says the relation of male to female is by nature a relation of superior to inferior ana sema kwamba uhusiano mwanamume na mwanamke kwa asili ni kama wali bora kuliko duni na mtawala na utawala to rule utawala mtawala na kutawala the male unless constituted in some respect contrary to nature is by nature more expert at leading than the female kwamba mwanaume katika nafasi bora ya kuongoza kuliko mwanamke then kiongozi mwingine ni nani anayeongoza and the elder and complete then the younger and incomplete mwana mume isipokuwa ameomba kwa elder complete nyuma na mwombile kwa asili ni mtaalamu wa kuongoza kuliko mwanamke incomplete mkubwa na kamili kuliko mdogo na asiyekufika So Aristotle is known for his sexism. Aristotle anajulikana kwa But he's by no means alone. Kwa mtu ambaye anaegemea mrengo. Some of their writers and philosophers and poets had even worse views. Kamba mengi ya kazi yake aliyofanya ilikuwa na mtazamo mbaya kwa wanawake and some like plato had better views wengine kama plato walikuwa na maoni mazuri but even plato if you see him comprehensively was still quite sexist lakini vile vile hata plato na kumwangalia kiujumla alikuwa bado ni ingekuwa na tasubi ya kiume so they see the male as vastly superior to the female 
wakati wanatazama wanaume kama wenye kuwa na umaarufu ama ukuu kuliko wanawake they talk about reason over emotion anazungumzia kuhusu kufikiria na wengine intellect fikret but especially the body lakini ikija katika mwili this is where we need to take ourselves from modern day society and plant ourselves in greek society hapa ndipo inapotajikana na tujitoe katika jamii ya sasa tuchukue katika jamii ile ya kale tujiweke pale and put our modern day brain to one side for the moment tuweke bongo letu bongo letu sasa hizi tuweke kando tuende this is a time of hot war and olympic games hii huu ni wakati wa mchezo mingi na vita muscle power skill uh, ni kuwa na nguvu uwezo is embodied in the masculine kama nguvu uwezo zimeweka katika zime kita katika ume and we could think of women as being revered for being able to birth children na tunaweza kufikiria wanawake kama wale watu ambao wana uwezo tu wa kuzaa wakuzaa watoto but remember that for them they did not think many of them did not think that a woman contributed anything to to the offspring wengi wao walikuja kwamba mwanamke hakuchangia kitu kwa yule mtu ambaye alijifungua This is where the idea of a seed comes from. Hapa ndipo jambo hili la begu lilipotokea. You plant your seed. Unapanda mbegu yako. And everything's in that seed. Kila kitu katika mbegu hii. To become an oak. Na baadaye na ndio hii inaza and they say sperm as the seed na wanaona kwamba in fact when one man killed his mother wanaona kwamba one of their poets argued that he couldn't be convicted of killing a blood relative because his mother never contributed to him ya mwanaume ndio kila kitu kwa mtu tunaezaliwa So a mother could not be a blood relative. Kubashi ali mtu mmoja alikusudia kuwa mtu lakini She was the soil that grew the seed. Kwa sababu mtu huyo hakuwa na uhusiano wowote au mama kwa There was a times a popular view that a woman's period was sperm. Kuna wakati ambapo watu walikuwa na maoni kwamba swala la heti la mwanamke ni yake. Kwamba yeye alikuwa she couldn't keep sperm alive and it would exit up her body with blood. Ni kwamba mwanamke kwa sababu alikuwa na ulemavu hangeweza kustahimili kukaa ni yake. Ni kwa sababu ingetoka nje kwa very good views of women. Basi The worship of the physical form was concentrated heavily on the masculine. Ah, ile jambo ni pabaya zaidi ni kwamba maoni yao yalikita katika jinsi ya kuonekana. The Greek ideal of beauty was embodied most perfectly in the male youth. Ah, mtazamo wa wa Yunani kwa mtu ni wenye kupendeza ilikuwa imekita katika ujana wa watoto wa kiume. We have to understand that in that way our mindset in the 21st century is a bit different. Lazima basi uelewe kwamba katika njia hiyo mtazamo wetu wa sasa ni tofauti. If you were to ask a lot of people today what is just the human embodiment of perfect beauty 
Nikiuliza mtu leo hii ni mtazamo upi wa urembo? Hakina. The accepted secular answer is Beyonce. Atakubali vile dunia imewafunza kwamba ni Beyonce. She's the queen. She embodies perfect beauty. Mayeye anabeba urembo uliofika. But back then true perfect beauty was masculine not feminine. Lakini pale nyuma urembo wa kina ulikuwa ni waume si wa uke. Because of the construct of their whole society and mindset. Kwa sababu ya mtazamo walikuwa nao It was similar for the Romans. Ilikuwa sawia na wakati wa Warumi. The embodiment of perfection was the male youth. Kamba ah urembo ulikuwa kwa wanaume wa jane. Kama hani wanaume ni jane. They revered that beauty. Kamba vijana hao wanaume ndio wanadhihirisha urembo. Youth being for them about 13 to late 20s, puberty to late 20s. 30. Kwa ni kipindi hiki cha miaka 13 hadi mwisho wa miaka 20. How the society operated generally was with the practice of pederasty. Uh, jinsi jamii ilivyofanya mambo yake ni kwa mtazamo wa I'm quoting uh, from the, the document. The ideal pederastic relationship in ancient Greece involved an Erastes, an older male, usually in his mid to late 20s, and an Eromenos, a young male who has passed puberty, usually no older than 18. Kumba urafiki bora wa kimapenzi katika Ugiriki ya zamani uliohusisha mtu anayetoka kiungu mzee kawaida kati ya miaka ya 20 na eromenos vijana mdogo ambaye wamepita ujana kawaida sio zaidi ya miaka 18 So we're discussing how society generally operated for the Greeks. Anajaribu tunajaribu kuangalia jinsi jamii ilivyofanya kazi katika nyakati za wayunani. What would happen is the following. Ila moja kinafanyika They would develop relationships between an older male and a young male. Wataunda mahusiano baina ya mtu mzee wa kiume na kijana mdogo. Before subscribing morality to anything, we should put ourselves back in their mindset. Kabla tuanze kuangalia mazuri na mabaya ni yapi twende katika fikra zao watu hao. The Erastes is the teacher. The Eromenos is the student. Uh, Erastes. So while there was a form of sex involved, and we'll get to that, there was the physical. This is a teacher-student relationship. The teacher is expected to take on a young Greek male. Mwalimu anakusudia kwamba atachukua mtoto mdogo and teach him how to be a good Greek warrior, a good Greek politician, a good Greek citizen. Na amfunze jinsi ya kuwa mwanani mzuri katika vita kuwa mwananchi mzuri. The teacher is mid late 20s about that age. Mwalimu ako takriba ni miaka 20 hapo. And the student just had to have passed puberty. Na watoto hawa wa kiume walikuwa wamepita ah kipindi hiki. There is a gray area where both ages could be um it wasn't always strictly this.
So depending on the source, I'll say 13 to 18, 21. Uh, Pretty much as soon as they could see his body, um, his height and uh, any any beard develop. And he would need to um, be seen no longer as a student. Now he was an adult male. Um, but Akifika katika umuri huwa sasa siye they trace the um, this so social construct back to Crete. There's not universal agreement of where it came from, but they believe about 700 BC. Uh, Really coming out of a Greek male dominated culture, homo social culture. So a male dominated culture. Delayed marriage for aristocrats. Uh, the common practice of having male conferences where they'd all meet and discuss. Uh, pretty much just the prevalence of the social seclusion of women. Both art and literary references show that the Aramos was at least a teen. Ages ranging from about 13 to 20. In unusual cases, it could be um, from tw uh, lasting up until 30. That was unusual. The most settled age range is about 15 to 17. The Erastus teacher would see a young boy that he liked. And he would start to pursue this young man. Offering him gifts, praise. It was, it was some type of... Um, he would need to convince the young man. Child, really. It was meant to be a mentorship program. But there was also a sexual component. And a, a, a relationship. Even um, lasting for could stay just in a mentorship, um, friendship for the rest of their lives. We'll go into detail tomorrow about what would happen um, as the, the child grew, grew to an adult. This is where people, I believe this is one of the reasons that people start tying what they would say is homosexuality to pedophilia. Because they look at this with a modern definition, it's nothing more than pedophilia. Um, the quote starts, the age range, if you can find it. 
The age range when boys entered into such relationships was consonant equal with that of Greek girls given in marriage, often to adult husbands many years their senior. Boys, however, usually had to be courted and were free to choose their mate, their Erastis, while marriages for girls were arranged for economic and political advantage at the discretion of father and suitor. Kiwango cha umri wa pato wa vulana walingia katika usiano kama huo kilikuwa kikiambatana na kile cha wasichana wa ugiriki waliokuwa ndoa. Mara nyingi kwa waume wazima wenye umri wa miaka yao. Kwa vulana hata hivyo kawaida ilazimika kuchumbiwa na walikuwa huru kuchoa wenzi wao wakati ndoa za wasichana zilipangwa kwa faida za kiuchumi na kisiasa. So if you want to tie this to pedophilia kama unataka kuunga mambo haya na mambo ya You would equally have to tie their heterosexual marriages to pedophilia. Itakulazimu kupata kuunga mambo ya ndoa ya jinsia tofauti na mambo ya pedophilia. Except in the heterosexual marriages the girls were generally not even given a choice. Ah uh, atakama ni ndoa za jinsia tofauti wa wana wa kika wakupewa kufanya uamuzi. So I would suggest the the link people draw between what is not homosexuality we'll get to that but what they call homosexuality and pedophilia is a lie. Kwamba nataka kusema kwamba mambo haya ambayo watu chukua katika wajinani wa kitambo kwamba walikuwa watu wa ndoa jinsi ya moja doesn't hold water. Na wanajaribu kuleta katika jamii sasa si kweli na haileti Going to read, continue reading from inquiriesjournal.com. Examining Greek pederastic relationships. The power dynamics involved in such a relationship with the Erastes always in control ensured that the Erastes kept his dignity as a fully functioning member of Greek society while the Aromanos grew up under the tutelage of such a man and as such could become a great citizen when he reached adulthood. Ideal pederastic couples were ones whose relationship directly benefited their Greek society. Kamba mienendo ya nguvu inayohusika katika mahusiano kama hao huo na uharibifu na wakati ile picha kwa wakosaji waliweka hadhi yake kama mshiriki anayefanya kazi kiukamilifu jamii ya Greek wakati Romeno zilikuwa chini ya uangalizi wa mtu huyo na kwa hivyo anaweza kuwa raia mzuri wakati anapokuwa mtu mzima wanandoa bora wa kimapenzi walikuwa wale ambao uhusiano wao ulinifaika moja kwa moja na jamii yao ya Greek So the So the older would teach the younger about politics, military and society. Wale wa umri wa juu wangefunza wengine kuhusu siasa, jeshi na mambo kama hayo. The evidence for the ideal, this being the ideal pederastic relationship being the most common in Greece is overwhelming. Matokeo mazuri yalitakiwa kuwa mwalimu zaidi kuliko mpenzi. But remember contradictions. There are standout cases of people breaking that model. Ah, uh, usisahau kwamba kuna mkinzano wa mtazamo ya jamii hizi. So you know about the sacred band of thieves. Unajua kuhusu watu hao wamejiweka pamoja na ndwezi. The liberal will say look at that beautiful group of 150 gay couples. Uh, watu wa mlango wa kushoto wasema kwamba angalia wale watu pamoja na 50. Bwana wenye I would argue this is not today's Jim Obergefell and John Arthur. 
atasema kwamba mambo haya katika dunia ya kiyunani kama kigiriki si mambo ya because these couples could not be composed of equals kwa sababu ndoa hizi nyingi azinge for every couple in a sacred band of thieves kila wana ndoa katika makundi haya one would have to be an older teacher and one would have to be a younger student mmoja lazima kwa ni mwalimu mzee mwingine kwa ni mwanafunzi au mwingine now they were likely closer in age than 13 and 30 na miaka yao ilikuwa na ilikuwa na uwazi mkubwa because this student is is fighting in the war But regardless of how that band constructed their army there had to be a, a hierarchical difference hata kama watu hao walitakiwa kuwa na plani wanapenda kupigana lazima kungekuwa na tofauti fulani za wanao we're out of time and i've gotten not gotten to my point But I, I, I just want to say this one thing and then we will revisit it tomorrow in detail. There was a sexual relationship. In the vast majority of cases there was a physical component. Katika uh, this we have more time. swala la ngono Then I'll keep reading. Nantasoma. The ancient Greeks did not conceive of sexual sexual orientation as a social identifier as modern western societies have done. Greek society did not distinguish sexual desire or behavior by the gender of the participants but rather by the role that each participant played in the sex act. That an active penetrator or passive penetrated kwamba ogiriki wa kale hawakufikiria mwelekeo wa kijinsia kama kitambulisho cha jamii ya kijamii katika kama jamii za kisasa za magharibi zimefanya jamii ya uigiriki haikutofautisha hamu ya ngono au tabia ya jinsia ya washiriki lakini badala ya jukumu ambalo kila mshiriki alicheza this active passive polarization corresponded with dominant and submissive social roles. Kendo la ngono ndio la mfanyazaji anayefanya kazi ya mponyaji alifanya. Ubaguzi huu wa kazi wa kijinga. The active penetrative role was associated with masculinity, higher social status and adulthood. Ya kijinga ulilingana na majukumu makubwa na ya unyenyekevu wa kijamii jukumu la kupenya lilihusishwa na nguvu. Well, the passive role was associated with femininity. lower social status and youth hali ya juu ya kijamii ya utu zima wakati jukumu la upendeleo lilihusishwa na uke hali ya chini ya kijamii given the importance in greek society of cultivating the masculinity of the adult male and the perceived feminizing effect of being the passive partner relations between adult men of comparable social status were considered highly problematic and usually associated with social stigma kwa kuzingatia umuhimu katika jamii ya Uigiriki ya kukuza wanaume wa mtu mzima wa kiume na athari inayoonekana ya kike ya kuwa mshirika tu uhusiano kati ya wanaume watu wazima wenye hadhi inayofanana na kijamii ilizingatiwa kwa kuwa shida sana na kawaida kuhusishwa na unyenye kifo so what they couldn't tolerate was a John Arthur and a Jim Oberberfield ila macho awange awange sudia ni kuwa na usawa katika ndo hii ya jinsi ya moja because remember they worship masculinity nataka kukumbuka kwamba walikuwa na jinsi sana and one of those men would have to be a female na mmoja wa wanaume wale lazima angekuwa wana women na wanawake walikuwa nothing good hadi gani hakuna kitu kizuri kwa This stigma, social stigma, however, was reserved for only the passive partner in the relationship. 
unyanyapaa huu hata hivyo ulitengwa kwa mwenzi tu katika uhusiano So if you had two equal males kama ungekuwa na wanaume wawili ambao wanalingana and I had sex na walikuwa na ngono both of them do not receive the censure or the stigma of society the person who was the dominant party or penetrated still retains all of his masculinity society does not condemn him they're different to, they're, they're fine with him because sex for them is not attached to the gender of the participants but they have gendered the act lakini wame i hope that makes sense they would look at a male penetrating or being dominant to another male ungeangalia mwanaume ambaye anapinyeza mwingine as fine just as masculine and it's hard to kwamba wote wanaume the stigma is reserved for anyone approaching the female ah yenye pa ungetokea kwa wale kwa mtu yote ambaye angejaribu kwenda kwa mwanamke According to contemporary opinion Greek males who engaged in passive anal sex after reaching the age of manhood at which point they are expected to take the reverse role in pederastic relationships and become the active and dominant member thereby were feminized or made a woman of themselves There is ample evidence in the theater of Aristophanes that derides these passive men and gives a glimpse of the type of biting social opprobrium and shame heaped upon them by their societies. Kulingana na maoni ya kisasa wanaume wa Ugiriki ambao walishiriki tendo la kujamiliana la kiume tu baada ya kufikia baada ya kufika umri wa utu zima wakati huo alisarajiwa kuchukua nafasi ya nyuma katika uhusiano wa kimapenzi na kuwa mshirika anayefanya kazi yanayoongozwa kwa hivyo walifanywa wa kike au walifanywa wanawake wao wenyewe na ushahidi wa kutosha katika ukumbi wa mchezo wa Aristophanes ambao hawadhihaki wanaume hao wasio na maoni ya kutoa mwangaza wa aina ya So liberals today look back at Greek society and, and try and draw out examples of a society that tolerated same sex relationships juu ya jamii yao and conservatives look back and try and link um pedophilia to pederasty ah uh, watu wa mvengo wa kulia wanaangalia mambo haya ya kigiriki na wanayohusisha na and i would argue both are wrong kwamba watu wa mvengo hii miwili i would argue that greek society did not tolerate same sex relationships among equals kwamba akubaliana na watu wao milango miwili kwamba kwa Kigiriki hawaku If you are typical especially a, a middle higher class ranked Greek male kwamba ikiwa wewe ni mtu katika kiwango cha juu katika Kigiriki pray puberty mtu wa tabaka la juu na uko life of a child uko kabla ya puberty so 13 forward after you get out so you must go with you become a student of a, a greek male napofika miaka 13 unakuwa mwanafunzi kwa mwalimu wako an adult who will train you mwalimu wako ni mzee kwa kwa you'll be courted by him you may have a number of suitors and you will end up choosing one na wanaweza kuwa wengi watawafuata na utaelekea kuchagua mmoja 
And there's the evidence that the fathers of these boys would hope that they were really pretty handsome, pretty and handsome, so they would attract a better teacher. Ozazi, ama mzazi wa kiume wa watoto hawa alikusudia kwamba watoto wao ndipo wanavutia sana warembo ili hata wanaume basi wangekuwa ni wanafunzi kwa hao walimu so it was mostly education but there was a supposed to be restrained but still existent sexual relationship ilikuwa ni swala la elimu lakini vile vile kumekuwa na swala la kimapenzi around 18 to 21 you reach adulthood unapofika katika utu zima miaka 18 hadi 21 And this relationship has to end. You cannot stay in a physical relationship with your teacher. Kwamba hapa uweze kuona uhusiano wa Because you're now an adult and he's now an, and he's an adult now you're equals. Kwamba katika kipindi hiki amwezi kuwa na uhusiano wa kimapenzi na mwalimu. And to continue any physical relationship would mean one of them would be seen as feminized. Na sasa mambo haya yangeendelea inaanisha kwamba mmoja wenu angekaa uh, na uke ndani yake. So certainly that the education stops and certainly any physical relationship. Uh, mambo ya kuwa na mtaguso wa kimombili umeishia hapo. From roughly 21 to 30 then this then becomes an Erastes and finds another young boy. Kwamba katika umri wa 21 hadi 30 wale ambao zao wamekuwa watu wazima has a physical relationship with him and trains him into adulthood. Wanajaribu kuwa na uhusiano wa kimapenzi na wale vijana wadogo wenye wana. Then that relationship has to end. In about 30. Ukifika miaka 30. Mimi a girl of 13 and 13 16 ah uh, kifika miaka 30 zikapidi aoe na um, msichana wa miaka is not generally given much of a choice 13 hadi 16 na msichana hawa wana uwe we come back tomorrow tapo rudi kesho i want to expand this simple explanation further ajaribu kupanua and look at the similarities and differences to this that existed in Rome and Egypt. Ajaribu kupanua mambo haya na aonyeshe kulinganisha na jamii ya Misri. The point I'm I'm making ni jambo nataka muelewe. If you want to see the significance of what society began to accept in 1989. Ikuso wone muhimu wa mambo ambayo jamii ilianza kukubali wakati wa mwisho 1989 It's not like society finally looked back at that good Greek civilization and learned something. Si kwamba jamii baadaye iliangalia katika jamii ya awali ya Wagiriki ikakubali mambo. Because if John Arthur met Jim Obergefell in a bar kwa sababu kama Arthur alipatana na Jimmy katika sehemu ya kujibrudisha That relationship would have been no more tolerated in Greece than conservative American society today. Kwamba uhusiano huo aunge kubalika katika jamii ya Wagiriki vile ambavyo angekubalika katika watu wa mrengo wa Because this is not a homosexual or gay relationship. Kwa sababu mahusiano ya katika jamii ya Kigiriki si ya We'll come back tomorrow. Dear Lord, 
We know how complicated history can become. But as we look back the context, we look back and see what you have observed. What existed around ancient Israel. We pray that we will have a true perspective. That you might guide us into unity in this movement. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Watch this face, it's not good.